And that, my friend, is how you claim undisputed glory one time for the ladies. If I tell you I'm good, probably you will say I'm boasting. If I tell you I'm no good, you know what I'm like. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yo, what's good, Boxer Talk family? It's your boy, Dr. PGNGM. Praise God to get money back for another YouTube video. Banger, man. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. Y'all know what time it is. The doctor's in the house, man. So check this out. Today, we are going to cover what i call a great weekend of boxing you know what i'm saying there was a couple of events a couple main events that, that that transpired you know and there was a couple fights on the card you know we had oshiki foster running it back with robs and for their second fight you know we also seen floyd kid austin schofield going against renee Giron, and we also saw liam davies going against shabazz masood you know so there's a lot of fights that happened but to me the most important fight the one with the highest stakes was none other than gabriella fedora versus Gabriella Al Alana, excuse me, for the undisputed championship at Flyweight, you know. So this was a big fight because, you know, we had some Gabriella on Gabriella crime. Damn. I'm sorry. But like I said, it was undisputed. You know, when you have an undisputed title, to me that should always be the main event. Because undisputed in boxing is like, you know, playing for the world series you know it's the world series of boxing yeah. shout out to the dodgers for winning by the way you know it's like the stanley cup of boxing yeah. you know so when this happens in my personal opinion no disrespect to floyd kid austin schofield and renee garone you know tell us garone but in my personal opinion when you have an undisputed title it's since it's for the highest stakes it should always be the main event unless it's another undisputed matchup with two po more popular fighters so to me with the stakes at hand and the fact that she, you she has the opportunity to become undisputed both of these fighters both gabriella's but also gabriella was potentially the youngest undisputed champion not just in women's boxing but ever Damn! you know so with this victory that she got you know this put her up there with the biggest accomplishments not just in boxing for the women's side but in boxing period you know and when you speak of the quotes you know in all the sports whether you talk about uh clarissa shields in boxing you talk about serena williams in tennis you talk about katie ledecky in swimming you're talking about simone biles in gymnastics you have to think about gabriella fedora now as her being up there with when it comes to accolades and accomplishments now of course she's only 22 years old you know so her, her career is just starting so you can't compare her as far as longevity goes but when it comes to queens of the squared circle you know what i'm saying the queens of the ring you talk about clarissa shields you talk about the recently retired seniesa estrada you know uh uh, uh, uh amanda serrano uh Layla ali you got now put some respect on gabriella fedora and it, i'm very anxious and and excited to see what her career uh ends up being you know like i said she has a long way to go but she just started at 22 years old being the youngest undisputed boxer in in, in boxing champion in history is crazy you know just like we just saw Devin haney right i think Devin haney he, Devin haney was 23 years old and he became the youngest undisputed champion in the four belt era well gabriella fedora said hold my beer i'm the youngest ever you know what I'm saying? Any era and any gender, any weight class, man. So shout out to Gabriella Fedora. Shout out to Devin Haney as well. But I think that Gabriella Fedora, aka the Golden Girl, aka Sweet Poison, you know, she has a long, long journey ahead of her to not only defend her titles at Flyweight, you know, but also to keep it going and you know let's see what she could accomplish more you know uh so i'm looking forward to seeing gabriella fedora i thought that was dope like i said i don't want to knock floyd K floyd Aust floyd kid austin schofield and, and renee giron because you deserve whatever you could get but in my personal opinion no matter who it was when you have an undisputed title she wasn't even the co-main you know beck the bully versus david stevens which was a good fight as well that was a co-main so in my personal opinion this was the best fight of the weekend you know um and shout out to Chantel Cameron as well, you know what I'm saying, fighting against Burgold, where she won. And she called out Katie Taylor if she beats Amanda Serrano. She wants the winner of that fight. But uh, yeah, Gabriella Fedora was like, you know, 22 years old, sweet poison. She came in there and handled business, man. And she won in emphatic fashion, definitively. And so we'll see what's next for her. But speaking of what's next, I'm thinking that, you know, she has a couple options, right? But Which I, the, the obvious one is to give Gabriella Alanis a rematch, you know, give her an opportunity to reclaim, you know, what she lost, you know, the belts that she lost. But also, too, Gabriela Alanis, this is only her second loss. Her first loss being against uh, Marlon Esparza, Esparza, who she fought to acquire some of those unified belts that she has uh, coming in. So she lost to her, and they, they had a rematch, and then she, she got those belts back, you know? So it'll, it'll be nice to see that maybe 
you know, with her history of losing and then coming back better, you know, then it'll, it'll be nice to give her another crack at it. Because that's what Lennox Lewis did, right? The great Lennox Alain Lewis, when he lost or had a draw, he doubled back, spun the block, and he and he won again, you know, beating everybody they shared the ring with. Same thing with Juan Francisco Estrada, who we just saw lose to Bam Rodriguez. Up until that point, every time he lost, he spun the block and won. So um, so we'll see what uh, Gabriela Fedora does if she decides to give Alanis a rematch. Or, speaking of Marlon Esparza, I'm pretty sure that she's out there watching that fight, you know, between the two Gabriellas, look at her chops like, hey, I want an opportunity to get my get back and maybe she could be next for Gabriella Fedor. So she has a few options, man, but the biggest thing I want to do is salute her, man, because that, that is dope. You know, she's a fellow Floridian like myself. You know, she went out there handling the business, so she did her thing. The youngest undisputed champion. It's a shame that she wasn't the main event, but that's not to take away anything from her night, man. She definitely ran the weekend, in my personal opinion, so I'm excited to see what she does next. Who would you like to see Gabriella Fedor fight next? And um, were you as excited as I was about about that matchup did you enjoy it let me know in the comments don't forget to like the video but most importantly remember we got we can do anything without god we're nothing the doctor's out peace i'm telling you man all boxing is exciting man from minimum weight to oscar Colazo to, to to heavyweight with daniel dubois it doesn't matter man male or female you know what i'm saying terrence crawford or clarissa shields there's a lot of exciting boxing out there to to to, to be observed you know so shout out to those that are handling their business in and outside the ring man the doctor's out from the hood to college, both worlds they had to meet Six degrees between us, so cold we're about to freeze But we're Florida boys, hot takes, we bring the heat We're moving the culture, the engineers to the streets